my god, geeks and gamers, what's up guys? It's Jesse Milestone, back again, wearing blue today, because I honestly have no idea where my Geeks and Gamers t-shirt is. Um, there's a, you can't see what's on the floor over there, but the Geeks and Gamers t-shirt is somewhere in a pile of clothes there. Um, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about Solo, a Star Wars story. I know Jeremy's been awesome about covering a lot of the news and the feedback and the reviews and the this that's been coming out about it, um, but he did not see it. I am sorry, I did. I did. I didn't pay for it. Someone else paid for me, but I will say um, I did do a review on, on Mindless Entertainment, my own channel as well, um, and that review has definitely stopped more than two people from going to see it, so my net effect on the world is positive. You're welcome. Um, I, I was getting this review to you guys earlier, but honestly, I did the I did mine on, on Friday, um, and I immediately felt sick and fell asleep uh, because I was that like emotionally drained from the experience. Um, if you want to see that full in-depth review, again, Mindless Entertainment, go check it out. But here are the important things you need to know about this movie. And guys, yes, this has spoilers. There are all the spoilers in this. Uh, if you don't like spoilers, stop watching because we're going to just ruin everything. I have a big issue with all the people who are like, oh, it was fine. Or like, yeah, it was a fun movie. It was great. I loved it. Um, not because they are not entitled to their opinion, um, but because you're, there's a disconnect there, right? A Star Wars, first of all, a Star Wars movie is not supposed to be fine. This is Star Wars. This is the greatest franchise ever created. This is the greatest trilogy of movies ever made. If we go back to the OT, right? Um, Star Wars movies should not just be fine. They should be the pinnacle event of the year. So, oh, Solo, it was fine. Not good enough, guys. Already, immediately, not good enough. Um, and the people who thought it was excellent, I, I mean, it wasn't. It was, it, was, it was solidly, as a film, solidly mediocre. Like, there were watchable elements to it. There were fun points about it. I'm not going to say it was the worst movie ever made. As a piece of film, it was made much better than The Last Jedi. Um, but it wasn't great like you can love it right but it's not doesn't make it a great movie it wasn't and it's also just not about solo like does anyone not see that as a problem oh we made the han solo origin story and we barely made it about han solo's character at all and the character we wrote has nothing in common with the han solo from the original trilogy is that not a problem for people i don't i don't like, oh, I went to see a movie about Han Solo's backstory, and uh, it wasn't, it didn't have anything to do with Han Solo's backstory, really, but it was a great movie, and I loved it. Are you serious? Like, that never happens. This is, and that just tells you the level of cognitive dissonance that's going on right now um, with, the, with the Star Wars fan base, because if you have that with any other movie, if you go see a movie that's completely the opposite of what's advertised to be, everyone hates it, even if it's a good movie. I mean, there are movies, there are good movies that have suffered from poor marketing because they, they advertise it as one thing, and it turns out to be something totally different. Those movies always tank um i but no the cognitive dissonance strong strong with the people who are still on board that's that's fine for them it's, it's not fine for me um i as you may or may not know han solo is my very favorite character in this entire trilogy so this is this is near and dear to me those of you who felt like felt your heart break during the last jedi because of what they did to luke that was me with what they did to han in the force awakens and even worse in this film um han solo they basically write him in as luke skywalker <laughs> he is just he's super yuppie he's super optimistic for a person who's been running scams on the street since he was 10 he's real bad at a lot of things um, we only see him one run one remotely successful scam, which is just, which is his first Sabacc game against Lando, and he loses because Lando cheats, which is another thing, like, Lando's a cheater, okay, Lando cheats at things, because we don't actually see Lando be good at anything either. Um, this was the most ridiculous, and that was something, I was looking forward to Lando's character going to this film, I thought Lando's character is gonna be awesome, Donald Glover is gonna nail it, like, pansexual bullshit and all, he's gonna knock this one out of the park, boom, and I'm gonna be like, that's Lando, I get it, okay, pansexual stuff is, doesn't fit for his character, um, and by the way, I have no problem with a pansexual Star Wars character. Just stop rewriting my existing characters to be pansexual. And in case you haven't heard, by the way, which I'm sure you have, Lando's pansexuality has nothing to do with the fact that, and like, I was concerned they were going to have him hit on Han the whole movie, which would have been a little bit awkward and changed the dynamic, but it was worse than that. It wasn't even like, Lando's a smarmy bastard who hits on everyone. It's like, no, Lando has to be pansexual, because that's how we're going to justify the fact that he wants to fuck a robot. That, I, to, to, blah. Um, 
Which, by the way, that's, that's like not a little side issue. The whole robots are now self-aware about wanting equal rights and, and justice. That's, that's, not, that's not like a thing you can just drop into a movie and be like, this is sort of a cute side thing we're going to not really talk about. Which, by the way, co-opted all of them being on Kessel. Kessel, one of the planets I was really excited to see. One of the planets I was really excited to see them you know, do lots of stuff with. And it was just... It, the only thing that happened there was like, oh, robot uprising, forget slaves working here, forget, like, even just totally overwrote the whole, there are people slaves. It was like, let's free all the robots, and I guess they'll free the slaves as well, and then, oh, chaos, and what's Kessel, who cares? Um, that's what that whole movie was. It was like, oh, basically, let's take these things that are recognizable to you, that you, that, that are important to you, the fans, and say, what is this, uh, there it is, who cares? And then let's take all the things that are not important and make a big deal out of them. This movie couldn't decide if it wanted to be somehow intersected with and interconnected with every single part of the Star Wars universe, or if it wanted to, you know, be its own movie and have nothing to do with it. So it was very push and pull in that respect, um, where you have things like Amelia Clark's character and then the Darth Maul cameo at the end, which again, just took away from the whole movie. You're like, oh, that's what this entire movie was apparently about. Um, and, and nothing to do with like the actual characters. My biggest problem, sorry, I know this is kind of all over the place. I just, it's really hard for me to even, <laughs> cause it's just, I could just go from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. Han Solo's character asks questions all the freaking time. <laughs> that's all he does. He just pops in and he's like, hey guys, what are we doing? What's going on? What can I help? That's, that's a problem for me. Han Solo is a character who always chooses to know. Han Solo is a character who always acts like he knows exactly what's going on, even when he doesn't. And the only time they play with that, by the way, is, um, is like, cringe-tastic, uh, so many cringy cringies. Um, when, when, uh, Woody Harrelson's character is confronting Emphis Ness at the end of the movie, um, and he's like, Blah, I'm gonna, and then Han Solo's like, let me upstage you, bro, and say something totally idiotic that gets undercut the very next second. Just because, just in case you weren't clear, uh, this character has not developed at all through the course of the movie, and yes, right here towards the end, we're just gonna undercut him one more time. We're gonna undercut him. And Enfys Nest, you guys have probably heard about this. Um, Enfys Nest is a woman, yay, but they set her up as this badass marauding chick, and I was like, finally, Star Wars figured out how to make a good villain. She's great in her first scene. She's fucking awesome. She's a total badass. You're like, get it, girl! Yes! Slay! And then, sorry. I don't know what that was or where that came out of, but it was just there. Um, and you're like, yeah, that's the best. And then just confrontation, big showdown, pops the mask off. Hey, I'm like 15 years old. And uh, I stand up for the oppressed people. And we call ourselves allies. Um, because, yeah, that's what we do. We don't do allegory anymore. We don't do metaphor anymore. We don't weave messages in to try to, you know, actually communicate and reach people who aren't on board with the things we're thinking. We just take our dicks out and slap you in the face with it. And if you don't like it, um, there you go. It's funny that, that Disney Star Wars is trying to set itself up as a super feminist uh, franchise because all the movies just feel like Disney mansplaining to me about what it thinks the world is about. So that's, that's kind of ironic. Um, so those, yeah, I mean, once again, with these over, and like, just K3, you know, SJW droid, like, actually, though, actually, an SJW droid, like, not even, you may think people are exaggerating, like, oh, well, she's just, blah, blah. no, she's like, she reminded me of every single person I hated in college. Like the reason that I started doing Meant to Offend on my channel is because of people who act exactly like K3 walking around my college campus just being terrible all the time. Like those people are terrible to other people. Um, so that's not fun to watch. That's not fun for anyone to watch at all. That's, I don't know if anyone enjoyed that, but it was dumb. Um, it was like, I mean, just who... Huh. And that's such an issue for me. That is such an issue for me. This is Star Wars is not supposed to mimic life. It's not supposed to look like, oh, I recognize those people from college or from this type of place or from that type of place. It's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to be just recognizable enough and just human enough that we latch onto it, but take us to a galaxy far, far away. Right? Where we can be like, oh my god, I'm transported to another world. So I wanna I don't wanna hear things like you know, equal rights. And I don't want to hear things like, we're the allies for those who can't stand up for themselves. I don't want to hear that in a movie. I'm not, I'm not opposed to equal rights. I am not opposed 
to social progress. I am not opposed to you people having feelings about being oppressed and wanting them to be changed. I'm not opposed to those things. If, if you want to fight that good fight, fight that good fight. But I am opposed to going to see a Star Wars movie and having the hashtags that are trending on Twitter, Twitter turned into cock form and slapped in my face. That's what these movies are like. That's what Last Jedi was like. That's what Solo was like. It's like being cock slapped by ideology for two hours. And it's not fun. Um, and so, oh, like I was saying, they ruined Lando's character. They straight ruined him. Um, they made him, they set him up like he was supposed to be like 10 years older than Han, even though they look the same age. And he's retired. I don't want to come see retired Lando who's just gambling his life away which then again doesn't then his transition of his character the, the journey of his character makes absolutely no sense at this point because you're like okay so he was a badass smuggler um until he was like maybe 35 and then just retired and became a rich asshole who gambles his life away and probably would be seen on a place like Cantabite and then retires from retiring to lead a respectable life running a mine on Bespin Ah, uh, did you think that through? Was there a logical progression there? Was there an idea? Was there a thought process? And that's, that just seems to be this movie is like, we don't really care. We don't care where these characters ended up. We just care about our shitty fan service. And we care about what makes sense for our movie because we, and it just so can so many contrived moments. So contrived. Again, Han Solo stepping up to, you know, I got this bro to Woody Harrelson just, just to get undercut. Um, Han Solo's totally, like, way too expository line of, I heard a story about you, I was wondering if it was true. Just to set up Lando to say, everything you heard about me is true. Which is probably his best line in the entire movie, so pff, there you go. Saw that one in the trailers done um too many moments that were the suspense relied on are these characters gonna make it out alive of course they are of course they fucking are don't spend so much time putting their life in jeopardy we know how this ends lando lives chewbacca lives han solo lives do i care if anyone else lives not really I know that they're gonna, you know, at some point either die or not be a part of Han Solo's storyline anymore. I know these things. So so stop trying to act like suspense is such an important part here. It's not. Tell me a good goddamn story. Oh, right. You don't know how to do that. So you're relying on your hokey little tricks to might try to make everything okay. And you can't, because it's not okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just... <sighs> I, I, that's, I keep coming back to that. Why did you call this Solo a Star Wars story if you weren't going to make it about Han Solo? I mean, he gets upstaged constantly by every other character. Every other character does and says way... I mean, the only things... Again, this is just... This is Disney's thing. Our heroes can't have any agency. They can't do anything for themselves. They just... Because they have to reflect millennials of this generation who have no agency and don't do anything for themselves. They just sit around and bitch and complain. And that's Han. Like, what did he... Okay. He flies the Millennium Falcon... And that's, that's downplayed anyway, by the way, because they take L3's uh, brain after she dies, which is the best part of the movie, by the way, and plug her into the Falcon so that it has his, her nav, his nav, like the, her nav system is in the Millennium Falcon now. So it even undercuts Han's success there. Like, oh, he flew pretty okay. But the reason that everything was fine um, was because of L3, um, a female droid, of course. Um, which, by the way, like, gender was never an important thing for droids before. Why do droids suddenly have gender identity? Like, okay, obviously C-3PO was voiced by a man, uh, K, but it was never, like, you referred to him as he casually, but it was never important that he was a male droid. That was never a thing, right? And even it became kind of a weird thing where, like, BB-8 is female. Uh, by what standard? No one ever assigned a droid's gender. Like, no one would ever have been like, is, is C-3PO a male droid or a female droid? Ah, uh, he's a droid. We call him he, because he's voice acted by a man, but he's a droid. It, not a thing. So all of a sudden, oh, now female droids are a thing. Now that's a whole droid sexuality is a thing. And like, again, you can't just drop these things and be like, okay, so we're, we're intrinsically changing the shape of the Star Wars universe and not really explaining it or justifying it or really going anywhere with it. Um, that's, that's kind of what... That's kind of what Disney Star Wars is all about. And Solo in that way is no different, you know? And that's for the people who are like, well, it was better. Yeah, it was a more watchable film. And that's people who argue Last Jedi is a functionally good piece of cinema. I, I just, I can't because it's not. Uh, you can like it, but it's, it's not a good piece of cinema. Um, the fact that Solo actually works 
narratively like a movie is supposed to makes it more watchable. And I think a lot of people gave it a pass because they were like, oh, well, it just makes more sense than The Last Jedi. But it's still, it's still, its shortcomings are still very much the same. It's, it's total lack of respect to the fan base and to the, and to what a Star Wars movie is, is still there. It may not be as obvious to you, but it's still just as present and therefore just as awful. Um, and that's why it's a terrible movie that's not worth seeing. So if you haven't seen it, don't. Um, and if you want to know more of what I thought about every single second of that atrocious film, you can go to Miles Entertainment. I do have uh, some other stuff, hopefully. Hope I mean, Jeremy's really going, going all out here, but I think that there may be one or two topics or maybe one or two articles that I'll read first. Um, so I'll be coming to you with a lot more solo commentary in the coming days as well. In the meantime, thanks for watching. You guys are awesome. Bye.